Their wings may have melted, but that hasn't dissuaded two of New York City's recently disgraced political figures from an attempted flight back towards the city's political sun. Disgraced former congressman and tweet-happy Anthony Weiner's bid to become New York City's next mayor was an early Christmas gift for the city's tabloids. But this past week's announcement by former New York Governor Elliot Spitzer to become New York City's next comptroller was nothing short of a holiday miracle. Battering like a bell, the media clatter continues to ask if their return indicates some kind of tidal shift in American politics. Former South Carolina Senator Mark Sanford just won a seat in Congress, despite a very public affair with an Argentine mistress. So perhaps Wiener and Spitzer's bids are not as audacious as they appear. A recent poll puts Wiener ahead of city council speaker and longtime mayoral frontrunner Christine Quinn. And after a mad four-day dash, it appeared Spitzer had been able to collect the nearly 4,000 signatures to qualify for the September primary, as well as instruct the city on just what a comptroller is and what he intends to do with the position. I think most people had two reactions when they found out that Spitzer was running for comptroller. The first was just to laugh at the obvious fact that we now have these two politicians running for office in New York who were previously brought down by these weirdo scandals with these, shall we say, revealing and salacious details and they're now using this campaign as a kind of redemptive act. But I think the second reaction was to wonder, what the hell does a comptroller even do? Now traditionally comptrollers are very passive equity investors. Spitzer's basic pitch to get elected is that he wants to change that. But longtime New York City political watchers argue that beneath the spectacle there are more troubling forces at play. Anthony Weider's campaign war chest ranks second in the seven-person field at just over four million dollars pre-scandal funds raised during his previous bid for mayor that had sat dormant since 2011. And Elliot Spitzer's campaign will be self-financed, putting both men on a footing shared by only a few New Yorkers. No one should draw any generalizations from this. Wiener had a campaign war chest left over, and had he not chosen to run, at some point he would have had to have given back these campaign contributions, which might have been an appropriate thing to do. But, in fact, he gets to spend it now. Elliot Spitzer has a personal fortune and can bankroll his own campaign, and that is what he is going to do. So, for an ordinary Americans who have to go to the voters to raise the money and defend a record, I think it would be considerably more difficult for anybody to just jump in to a campaign after committing these kinds of egregious sins that both of these gentlemen engaged in. One of the things that strikes me both about Spitzer and Wiener is that they've been successful in framing the narrative in terms of their personal life failures, while in fact the real indictment, the more profound failures are public. Spitzer was a failure before he became client number nine, and there's so much hypocrisy there you know, why it transfers to pay for his trips, etc. So it's really much more the public sins. Wiener was a do-nothing congressman. He sort of gets caught up in this text sexting thing. What does he do? He lies, he lies, he lies, he lies and lies until he can't lie anymore. And it also points out, how does this guy react under crisis? He collapses. So it's in a sense, by focusing on the personal redemption side, they're diverting attention from their more profound, I believe, public failures. So with tightened lower lips and claims they've learned their lesson, the Spitzer Wiener Show plays on. While it's difficult to determine the authenticity of their humility, both men seem rather free swimming in the ensuing circus. And if Janis Joplin is to believe, freedom is just another word for nothing left to lose. Christopher Booker, Financial Times, New York City.